Hi again, it's Rick here from The Game Creators and I've got a new update on the game I've been making, the simple physics game. Last time I said I'd make the ball change from green to red and also have the buckets coloured differently and maybe also add some more bats. So let me just run what I've got now and you can see that I've done those things. So I've got three different bats. Oh yeah, the red one's going in there. Um, so you can interact with any of these. There's no scoring yet, there's no actual gameplay. I just said I would randomise the colour of the ball and add a few more bats onto the scene. And that's what I've done. So let's have a look at how I've done that. Well for the three seesaws, I created an array called seesaws and I set um, each one to minus two or two and minus two and that gives us the initial uh, positions of them so if I was to change this one to two as well then the first two well these two because seesaw one is actually the one at the bottom um, if I change them all to two you'll see that they'll all be in the same position when the game starts like so and I'm thinking about maybe moving this one left and right and that would add a bit more fun to the game um, but yeah it's all very early stuff so that array controls the angle of the bats so let's scroll down the code and we have to go to some new code down the bottom here so previously I had one bat moving up and down but I've had to make some functions because I don't want to write the same bit of code for every bat. So the function move seesaw will take two inputs. It'll take the seesaw to move which is one to three and then the array index for that seesaw. So if we go up to where we're calling so we've got We've got move the bats here. We call it with game seesaw. So we, if we go to the scene, remember we've got the properties game seesaw. That's that one. Game seesaw two and game seesaw three. Go back to the code, and you can see I'm calling move seesaw for the first or the bottom bat, and I'm telling it the index one for the angle, and the same for seesaw two and seesaw three. So those variables come into this function and detects whether it's going to be moving anti-clockwise or clockwise, does that check and jumps back and then sets the angle for that particular seesaw. And that just simplifies the code. It means it can work for multiple bats. Another function is check seesaw. So from the last time we were checking to see which side we're interacting with the bat. So again we we had one piece of code that dealt with just one sprite but now we've got multiple sprites we've got to be able to deal with any type of seesaw so that's what that function does and again it takes the same sort of parameters so I could keep adding seesaws and these functions that do that work for me uh, we've also got some code here called um, ball check so if you remember if a ball goes off the screen at the bottom then reset the ball well, reset ball is a new piece of code and this is the code here so it resets the um, ball back to the top of the screen at 50 and it also randomizes the ball position we need to look at that next time because it's it's positioning it out of the reach of the seesaws which is is no good um, and then it increases the velocity of the ball and um, applies that velocity to the ball when it's reset to the higher position and that jumps back and then we've got set ball colour what does that do? well it's a new routine we scroll down here we've got this bit of code so ball colour is a variable and we say ball colour is random between 0 and 1 if it's 0 then we set the, the colour to green uh, so we've got RGB G in this case is 255 so it's going to be green Otherwise, set it to red, 25500, um, just to show you that, if you're not aware of these 
RGB values. So if I do that, RGB is going to be blue in this case. So if I run the code again, okay, the first time it's green. Hopefully we'll get, now we're going to get another green. We're going to get a random one eventually. There we go, so that one's blue. And that's what that bit of code does there. So let's just change that back. And it changes it to red. So yeah, that's the main bits of code that I've added this weekend. Uh, a bit busy this weekend, so I've not been able to do as much as I'd like to have done. But you can see that the game's coming along. Uh, oh, I must have made a mistake. What's this? Yeah, need to zero that. So, back to red. Oh, another thing is the, the sprite for the ball. I changed that. Uh, you see I've got a white ball. Um, I've got the DLCs. I think I got it out of the giant asset pack one or two, one of those. If you've not got these DLCs, they're very good. There's lots of uh, images and sprites that you can pick out of. Because it's white, I just change the colour of the ball rather than having to change the texture or anything like that. So that was a good sprite to use. So that's progress so far. It's starting to look more interesting and I've got to have a think about how the, the game's going to develop really, make it a bit more interesting, get some scoring in there, maybe have some level progress as well. But that's it for this week and I look forward to showing further updates next time. Bye for now.